Bix time! It's episode 72, the ATM podcast. Mark Watson, a man of international broadcasting experience, much of, and we so look forward to your coverage of the Paris Olympics, which is going to be your fourth or fifth mark. Topics on the table, including the black caps, and why do we poop the bed? Why are we such fraidy cats whenever we play Australia? Super rugby, that opening round. I'm going to play you... One of the greatest Mark Robinson, Mark Robinson quotes ever as he jetted off to another world rugby meeting to discuss the correct space in which to create space to have this meeting, Mark. Apologise to me! And let's get this one off our chest to start with, shall we? Because Lockie Ferguson brought up a great point by not playing the third T20 for the Black Caps against Australia, a point that you and me bang on about most weeks, and we still have to hit this drum and hit it loud because no one seems to be listening still. Lockie Ferguson bowled eight overs across three days. Then he gets rested for the third T20, even though he's not playing the test matches and the domestic season has finished to manage his workload. I'll give you a list of other names so that we can double up the discussion. Sam Kane, Brody Retallick, Bowden Barrett, Adi Savir, Aaron Smith, Richie Mawanga, Shannon Frizzell. All seven of these men started the World Cup final. All of them are playing 80 minutes apart from Bowden, who's injured at the moment, in Japan. Quite happily playing rugby, Mark. Yet our All Blacks here, including some of them that didn't actually play at all in France for the last few weeks, have to have managed workloads for Super Rugby. So those two things to me are now atypical, mate. Sorry, this is a long-winded question, but bear with me that we are now just getting dumbed down as sports fans in this country and we get spoon-fed this continual narrative so that we're now meant to believe that it's better that the players don't actually play and that they are rested all the time. And the amount of fights I have on social media about this where people just continually pedal that line at me, oh no, they need their rest, they need their rotation. Why have all of a sudden so many people been sucker-punched into believing that this is actually real again? Oh, oh, look, it's just PowerPoint presentation BS. It's sports scientists um, who seem to somehow think that, you know, everybody falls into the same box. I mean, you know, scientists once told us the earth was flat, mate, and we pretty much later on proved that's not the case. Um, yeah, look, it, it, it just blows me away. Just this, you, we wonder why crowds don't tune up anymore. Well, no one's tuning up because no one is actually playing. You, you know me, Martin. I mean, I, I, I come from an Ironman triathlon background. I've been lucky enough to work with some of the best athletes in the world. And, mate, you should see the workload these guys put themselves through. And people will argue, oh, yeah, but you don't have the gladiatorial contact in those sports. Well, I'll encourage anyone to try and go and run 100 miles a week and see what impact that has on the body. I mean, Peter Snell did a one day. I think six to eight weeks continuous only once of 100 miles a week just how tough that is and I know guys that are doing that cycling swimming doing all of these things I just had my young daughter down at the surf life-saving nationals uh, for under 13s down at Mount Monganui over the weekend huge huge event these kids were racing 12 times a day sometimes absolute not even thinking about it backing it up the next day and you know as a little kid you grow up you, you grow up Martin and you say to yourself Oh, please, I don't want it to be running. I don't want it to be cancelled. Don't yeah, substitute yeah, me off. It. I yeah, want to play. It. I want to play. And yeah. all you want to do is play. You've got a ball before school. You've got a ball during the interval break, the lunch break, after school. You're having all these ad hoc games. And then suddenly you get to a professional level and you're told you don't want to play or you make out you don't want to play or you're going to get tired. You know, you mentioned the cricket. We need to beat Australia. We can't just go, oh, well, look, we'll rest and rotate. And These whole World Cups, everything's always about, oh, yeah, but we're developing for the World Cup. No, just win games in the here and the now. I'll keep saying it, Martin. Show me, show me where rest and rotation has helped the All Blacks. We didn't win the last World Cup. We didn't win this Rugby World Cup. There is no science that backs it up at all. Well, historically, we've gone on. We've talked the likes of Jerome Kono. We've talked the likes of Kevin Mialamu and how when they did play full seasons of rugby, they were actually stars of those Rugby World Cups. There is no data to back this up. The only data that I'm seeing, Martin, are crowds starting to fall away, people becoming apathetic, and people just not caring anymore. You know, billboards around Auckland, come and watch the Blues, and they've got these marquee players put up on these big billboards, and you're going, yeah, but if I turn up, are they actually going to be yeah, playing? Right, yeah, Am I actually right. going to see Am them going playing? To see those guys, because yeah. it's basically it's basically fraudulent. It's like, yeah, well, you two are playing, but Bono's not going to be there, but we've got a replacement for him. So they are singing the same songs, but it's not going to be quite the same, but it's still you two. I, I mean, it's, mate... Oh. It's frustrating, isn't it, mate? It's frustrating because we continually seem, you know, and look, I'm going to play you this, and this, this is the right time to play you this Mark Robinson quote. Have a listen, ladies and gentlemen. It's just extraordinary. A man who can sit there 
and stare down a camera and say absolutely nothing and convince himself that what he's saying is actually worthwhile and is somehow going to contribute. Talk about how we can be more nimble and agile in this space. I think we we are really hoping we get um, into the forum and we just create the best possible forum for decision making. So, you know, I don't want to sit here and promise what the outcomes are going to be here, but we need to make sure we have the right information, you know, right people in the room, the right insights, right level of, you know, the balance of, um, you know, fan focus and what the fans want and, and player safety, for instance. And then we come out of there with a really unified approach to move quickly to address some of the things we're talking about. <laughs> well, first thing the fans want, first thing, by the way, mate, I don't think you really need to sit in a room. The fans just want, first thing, your players playing every week. They don't want the game refereed in slow motion and replay. Um, but I just interesting, when he does find the space will that mean the players get more space we as fans get more space in the grandstand and eventually we do move into that right space will we see neil armstrong in space or is that a different space mark <laughs> so the whole point of this irb meeting or world rugby meeting where they all fly business class they do their five-star hotels they all clip the ticket they don't pay for a single drink or they don't pay for a single eat they don't actually spend any of their own money and they're going there to decide whether or not the right space is in space to have a meeting to talk about the fact that this is going to be a great meeting. I've never heard such gobbledygook, and this guy is, is an absolute master at it. And here they are with all the problems World Rugby has at the moment, and what they want to do is sit around, hold hands, and make sure that everyone agrees that this is the right way to hold hands. It's just yeah. extraordinary, isn't it? And what's even worse is when you see a guy like John Kerwin, who loves his rugby so much, sits there nodding his head to this. No, at what stage does oh, he no, look no, Mark look, Robinson you, in the you, eye and go, you, dude, you, you, what you are you actually don't, don't, saying? Martin, just don't get me started on the whole Sky thing. I mean, they are just a vehicle, a PR firm. You know, here they are now have giving free rugby back to people because they're trying to create some sort of advertising revenues and they wonder why, mate. You know, I've said this every week. Here's a company that have invest half a billion dollars on a product that no one's watching and they're complicit in it by the fact that they don't create any discussion, don't ask the hard questions, don't get us standing around the water coolers actually talking about it. You know, rugby was never more popular when we did have controversy. When are they going to realise that when, you know, man's defeats are on the front pages man's victories are on the back, that we want to hear about it. We want to have the discussion. I, I mean, seriously, I mean, I, I just hope when Mark Robertson's there sitting there talking about the space that he does get to beat Buzz Aldrin, that he does get to meet all of those <laughs> that have walked on the moon before him, mate. Because I tell you what, mate, these guys, these guys are just... It's yeah, they're, they're honestly, the ulti- they're, the uh, ultimate, they're the ultimate politicians, aren't they? they Martin? That's so, what they are. They don't actually run sports organisations anymore. Tell us, they can sit there too and while they're up there and, and tell us about how, you know, the social media numbers for the game are just through the roof and we shouldn't just look at the crowd numbers and that the women's rugby is just going to save it and what a wonderful product that is. And, oh, yeah. I mean, mate, honestly. Apologise to me!